Terry Hemrit on XRT. Right. She plays music and whatever she says makes sense. Terry Hemmert has been on WXRT for 15 years. Variety, the show business bible, calls her the top of the rock. Breakfast in bed, I'd settle for breakfast in the studio about now, but that's UB40 and caffeine is the only drug abuse that I uh, can't say no to. Uh, no, uh, sleep is uh, not really easy to get because uh, when I first started doing the morning shift, I've never been a morning person. In fact, I worked most of my professional life on the all-night shift, and that's really screwy because you don't know when to sleep then. So when I started doing mornings, I asked some of my, uh, my peer group, you know, their morning jocks, how they did it. And they said, oh, well, you go to bed at 7.30 and get up at 3 and have a big breakfast and read the newspaper. And I thought, oh, my God, I can't do that. So I just decided to quit sleeping. <laughs> Simple as that. So I go out every night and uh, go to concerts and plays and see friends and things like that. And uh, besides, I can't go to bed that early. I've tried. I, you know, I lay there in bed and just toss and turn. So I get to bed about 11 o'clock, maybe midnight, and get up at 4.30 and come in here and run on adrenaline and some caffeine. Well, see, I was a little Miss Jock when I was a uh, kid, and I think that prepared me for dealing with sexism in radio. I'm sure it did, because when I was a kid in the 50s in a small town in Ohio, girls weren't supposed to want to play softball or baseball or basketball or anything like that. Maybe run relay races or do tumbling, which I thought was totally hideous and degrading, you know. So and so that sort of prepared me for that whole mentality of, well, you can't do that. Why? Because you're a girl. Huh? <laughs> you know, and uh, that just never made any sense to me. And it prepared me for when I got into radio, and they said, well, you can't do that. Why? Because you're a girl. Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> I like being in a position of, uh, of exposing new music and exposing people to different things that are going on. That, to me, is real exciting. It's like I was the kind of kid that I was always inviting people over to the house. you got to hear this new record. you got to hear this new record. And it was maybe one to three people I was turning onto that record. But it, that's just always been part of my nature, I guess. That's part of the fun of my job. It's like being Santa Claus in a way. You know, somebody will come up and say, you know, I'm a big Roxy music fan because of you, you know, or I'm into the blues or jazz because of you or something like that. To me, that's, whoo, that's like when I meet a former student that says, I'm in radio now because of what I learned in your class or I'm, you know, that to me, that's a real, that's a nice compliment. That's, that's much better than, oh, I love your voice or yeah, and you've been going through all your Led Zeppelin albums going, where's that song, where's that song? It's not on those albums, it's on a B-side. Hey, hey, what can I do, Led Zeppelin? Most stations, uh, the DJs don't program their own music. You know, they get a computer print out. They don't spend three hours a day before putting together with special loving attention like I do. Uh, <coughs> sometimes frustrated attention, like things just don't fit in the slot. But um, uh, no, this is definitely a music station and the jocks that work here are here because they like music. You know, this isn't just a career move and waiting for the next step up. We're here because we love the music and not many places in the country you can play the diversity like, you know, like right here we've got, uh, in one hour we've got Elvis Presley, we have Black of Seagulls, UB40, uh, you know, it's quite a variety of stuff. And the Smithereens coming up, so we play, it's not just all new music, we play a lot of root stuff like Elvis and old R&B and things, but uh, we also play the newest of new, and I like that kind of commitment to the music. Yeah, the politics of dancing there, exhuming McCarthy, R-E-M. Uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, there's some good advice for you baby boomers. Teach your children well, and Michelle shocked when I grow up. Should it be if? Not when, that's what she said, when. Michelle Schacht on WXRT in Chicago. My style, I try to cover a lot of different things. I don't want to be so issue-oriented that I, I'm on my soapbox every morning, but, but I think there's a segment of the audience out there that doesn't want to just be, you know, amused. They want to think about something or know what's going on, and, and I'll express my point of view sometimes, but other times I just try to let people know what's going on, you know, and they can do with that what they will. Or they can disagree with me, that's fine, you know. But, uh, you yeah, know, it's American, you know. <laughs> as long as Mort Downey's on the air, I think I should speak up once in a while, you know. The, uh, 
The other side should be heard from once in a while for crying out loud, you know? But I don't think I should do it every day. If I got to the point where I was like politicizing every day, I think it would get old and and my first job is to entertain, really. Excuse me. XRT. Sure. I knew what I wanted to do and I set out to do it, I think is basically it. It's just, you know. If if it, if I'd wanted to be a nun, I would have been just as persistent and determined, I think, you know. Really. You know, whatever I do, if I really want to do it, I really, we really go for it. We all would have lost that. Mm -hmm. I still want to be a priest. You know, I'm dealing with sexism now in the church. In fact, the other night I had to get up and make an announcement at the, the tryouts for the Messiah, and I got up behind the pulpit and said, I always wanted to be a priest when I grew up, and one of the nuns yelled out, you got my vote. <laughs> so, but I haven't grown up yet, so I still have a lot of, plenty of time.